Before kicking off this episode, I've noticed in my menu I finally have the option to do mystery gift, and we could have gotten this earlier technically, but I've been waiting for something very special here in Veilstone City. You might have noticed I am in front of the clothing shop, and that's because we've got a clothing gift to receive. From the stars comes down a wonderful present. That's kind of ominous, dude. Like, what if that crashed full force into the earth? I think that might be how the dinosaurs got extinct. It was actually a giant present containing light? Here's what you got, platinum style, yeah! And we've also got the manaphy egg, but we're gonna do that a little bit later in the episode. Although I guess I could have just received it real quick, but yeah, here in Veilstone City, you can check out the metronome style shop, which not only has the best song in the dang game. Yeah, dance along everybody. I know that music's got you pumped, so smash that like button while you're hyped up. But now we can also change our style and look like we are straight out of Pokemon Platinum, my favorite version of Sinnoh. Though, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is kinda coming for it. Trust me, we haven't seen anything yet. Now let's begin the episode proper as we've got Luxray behind us. I was trying to keep it hidden, but that did happen at the end of the last episode. We got Zip fully evolved and blushing happily for some reason. I mean, I'd be blushing too if I was just fully evolved into a awesome lion like that. Uh, but over here, we've got Dawn and a couple of Team Galactic grunts. I dropped my Pokedex and Team Galactic found it. Now they won't give it back. Please, I need your help. You're my only hope, Obi-Wan! United, we can't lose! I'm not letting Team Galactic get away with this, dude! So, let's, uh, help our damsel in distress by taking on a couple cosplaying fools. What is up with Team Galactic? Like, for real? Are those wigs, or do they all just decide to get the exact same hair dye? And hairstyle, too. Like, what must the barber think when they all walk in and they're like, I want the sea salt popsicle, fam. <laughs> These two dudes have got the Beautifly and Dust Tox duo. It's at least a little bit of an upgrade from the Wurmples that we kept fighting earlier on in the playthrough. And as you can see, my team is getting quite up there. We got everybody in the level 30s, so I think it's about time we re-add Benedict to the party. Our little Togepi that's been right in the bench. I didn't want it earlier because, you know, it was a little bit too high level, but I think now it's a little bit more appropriate to bring him back. And I think after this galactic battle, we get the HM for Fly, which is gonna make things a lot easier to backtrack for all our honey trees, but more importantly, to get the Soothe Bell for Togepi, which is the item that raises happiness. So if you didn't know, Togepi evolves by max friendship or happiness. There used to be something called affection, the stat that you needed to evolve into Sylveon back in Pokemon X and Y. It was like exclusive to that little mini game in Pokemon ME where you could play and pet with your Pokemon. But uh, ever since Sword and Shield, I think they kind of like merged or changed the name of that feature officially. Or rather the affection and friendship slash happiness all just became one thing. So the more you train and uh, play with your Pokemon, like just naturally by being in battles and stuff, they will get happy. That stinks. Our Pokemon are weak. We should get new ones from headquarters. Uh, who cares about some Pokedex anyway? <laughs> Team Galactic is gonna own all the Pokemon in the world. No! In the universe! There, take it. Now well, that was easy. Unless the other one's a little more hesitant. Those things we had in the warehouse have already been moved to Pastoria anyway. So we'll say, you'll get yours and run like the grunts we are! <laughs> you know, they do serve their purpose. I was hating on the grunts earlier saying that Team Galactic would be nothing without their scientist, but the Grunts are really the backbone of the operation. I mean, they're weak and everything, but they get the job done that no one else wants to do, so now our next step is to go to Pastoria, where the Great Marsh awaits, home to many kinds of Pokemon. And also, the next gym, which is maybe a little more important to me. Uh, I like the way those balloons look up there. See, that's one place where the blur actually makes sense. I don't know, some areas of this game, there's like a little bit too much blur and it's a little distracting, but there it actually makes sense because it's uh, really close up to the screen, so it'd be out of focus. But yeah, definitely come to this warehouse and grab yourself the TM for Fly. 
It's very easy to miss. I don't know why they put it there instead of having Dawn just like give it to you from the professor or something. But I mean, it's not like you really need fly, like it's not required, but it definitely makes traveling around the region like a lot easier. But yeah, now that we've got fly, let's uh, open up our Poketch and go all the way to... Oh my goodness. Not only did I burp at the weirdest moment, but I also skipped right past everything to number 20, which is our hidden moves. And that's convenient, we got a little flag over past Oria to show us that is indeed where we want to go to next, so we're gonna have to head all the way down through uh, Route 214 and the Valor Lakefront, it seems, but first, like I said, we're gonna head back to Heart Home to grab ourselves something very important. So let us summon our magical Star Raptor from the Poketch to carry us away. Although it'd be pretty hilarious if Bidoof could somehow fly us too. Come on, keep up Luxray. You know, it's actually not doing too bad. <laughs> I could complain more about this whole Pokemon following feature, but I do like just seeing them out in the overworld. Except not in buildings, of course, but uh, compared to Sword and Shield, I feel this one might be a little better, or at least the Pokemon are faster. I mean, they both have their flaws for sure, compared to like Pokemon Heart Gold where the Pokemon would just be stuck behind you, like even if you, I don't know, go too fast or it gets stuck in a corner. Well, it wouldn't get stuck in a corner is my point. Uh, in this game, it's a little bit more buggy. I feel like the Pokemon very often gets stuck and then it has to like teleport back to you. Which also happened a lot in Sword and Shield's Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, but I'm just happy to have the feature at all. Pokemon following behind you is so cute, and as much as I wish it didn't affect their friendship, it actually does increase the amount of friendship that your Pokemon gets. Which is good for ones that evolve from it, but not so good when it comes to battling. As you can see, both of our buddies are now hopping up in excitement, which I'm all about that. You know, seeing my Pokemon happy makes me happy, but uh, I don't like the extra bonuses in battle, like the crits, and the uh, surviving with one health and that kind of stuff. So I wish that in the future, like I don't want them to completely get rid of the feature, but I do hope that they somehow have an option to turn that stuff off. And same with the EXP share, cause there's some people that don't want it on. I personally really like it, cause I've been able to train up so many more Pokemon than just six on my team. So there's definitely some benefits to it. Plus, I think the game honestly is going to get a lot tougher the later we go. I mean, just last episode, you saw how May Lean's Lucario destroyed us. So, uh, yeah, I don't think this game is too easy at all. I mean, it can be if you only train like three Pokies, but uh, here we've got the Pokemon Mansion, which is where we need to be. And uh, all these guards that you may have noticed patrolling around the area, they are actually trainers. However, you can only battle them at nighttime, which is kind of lame, but I guess it's kind of cool in a way. Like the joggers that we saw in the previous routes only battle you in the mornings. There's a version that's night mode as well. So it encourages you to revisit some of these routes, you know, at different times of day, not just for the trainers, but for the Pokemon too. We're just landing crits left and right, dodging attacks. Grottle is a little bit uh, too excited, I would say. I'm just gonna ignore it though. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Like I said, I wish that you could turn off that feature just because that's the only aspect, in my opinion at least, that makes the game a little too easy. And it's maybe more not the fact that it's too easy, but just that it's like completely based on luck. Oh, it's below? So on the, man, why does it go away? Like, I wish the circle would just stay, because there it is, a super potion. Was that so hard? Dowsing machine, why you gotta be like this? Anyway, the reason why we came all the way here is for this beautiful mansion. Not exactly the most original decorations, like this man just copy-pasted the same statue over and over. And yeah, the main attraction here is the trophy garden, which that maid just pointed out. But if we go all the way to the left, I'm so sorry, this is beyond limits. This actually used to be a pretty fun minigame, at least in Pokemon Platinum. I'm not sure if it was in Diamond and Pearl, but you actually had to battle those maids and uh, beat them with a certain amount of moves, which was really interesting. I don't know what item you would get for it necessarily, or I don't remember exactly, 
but uh, that's no longer a thing. Instead, we got a couple of items in the trash, and uh, if we talk to this girl, we will get ourselves the Soothe Bell, which is precisely what we came here for. So let's go ahead and put that on our Togepi right now. And in fact, we gotta get Togepi out of this box. Uh, who do we replace though? I guess Zip can sit out for a little bit since it's already fully evolved and most likely it's gonna be fine at the level that it is against Crasher Wake. And here's those lenses we got earlier, plus the Soothe Bell, which we're gonna give to Benedict. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, I don't know if Luxray should have really been on the bench because of uh, what happened at the last gym. Like, maybe we do need more training, but at the same time, that does make the playthrough a little bit more interesting. Actually, reading some of the comments on the previous episode, I noticed I wasn't the only one who struggled against Maylene, or more specifically, her Lucario. So, I'm glad we can all share in the pain of getting one shot by Dream Punch, and that I wasn't the only one who's lost a battle in this game. Or any game in general, I feel like I hadn't lost a gym battle in forever in any playthrough. But, uh, what? I don't even want to touch the statue, bro. I'm just admiring. Like, relax, dude. Anyway, this is Mr. Backlot himself. Hello, welcome to my opulent mansion. <clears throat> There's a lot for me to be proud of inside and outside. But what makes me the most proud is my trophy garden out back. Why bother traveling afar when Pokemon are attracted by my garden? They come to me! You're welcome to join them and marvel at my garden. We'll do that in just a little bit. I think the butler might give us something or... Never mind. I'm thinking of a post-game feature where new Pokemon actually get added into the garden. But at least for right now, at the point that we're at in the game, or well, until you beat the Pokemon League, nothing really changes. But you can actually find some pretty unique Pokemon in here, like Pichu, which also evolves by happiness, actually, just like... Benedict. So uh, if you want to get yourself Pikachu, I mean, you can either train up this little guy or you can keep looking around here in the trophy garden. You can actually encounter Pikachu as well, but uh, I don't feel like doing that. So we're going to head out and actually we might as well just uh, fly to our next location because there is another special gift that we can now receive in Jubilife City. Well, technically we could have gotten this a uh, long time ago, but uh, I'm knocking everything out now that we've got Fly, okay? So, here in Jubilife, or wait, we don't even need to go to Jubilife, actually. We can do this from anytime, anywhere, in the mystery gift, through the internet. We've got the Manaphy Egg. I was thinking that we had to come to Jubilife because that's how you unlock mystery gift, unless you just wait until this point in the game. I don't know what exactly the trigger was, but just randomly after Maylene's gym, that option popped up in my menu, but, uh, there it is! The magnificent, glowing Manaphy Egg! It looks so nice and special. There's that Manaphy Egg looking nice and special. But I feel like it's gonna take a while to hatch. Oh wait, it says it's close to hatching. What? Did they actually make it so the egg is just ready to hatch right from when you grab it? Before we head on to Veilstone, there is actually something I seem to have forgotten. Thank you guys for reminding me in the comments that this nice fisherman here on Route 209 will actually give us a good rod. I don't know why throughout this whole playthrough I've been ignoring all the fishermen. Maybe because I just have PTSD from fighting way too many Magikarps in a row so I just don't even bother talking to them. But uh, yeah, we don't need much explaining bro. Obviously you just throw the rod into the water and you can catch yourself some nice fish. Easy peasy, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, not even a nipple. <laughs> Maybe fishing isn't as easy as I thought. Moving on, I don't know where we got that Star Raptor from because our Vega is definitely still not fully evolved. But uh, do any of these meteorites? No. I thought for a second they might hold a special item, but I think you can actually use these to change Deoxys into his different forms. Not that you can actually get Deoxys in this game, at least as far as I know, there might be something hidden in the post game, but I don't think so. Let's move on to 214. You're serious, aren't you? It's too badly chewed up and there's nothing to see there. Well, I guess there is that Ruin Maniac guy you could check out. <laughs> that guy's been digging his way through the bedrock all by himself. Oh, dang. You seen that Minecraft? Wait, you can't dig through bedrock. That's literally the only block that is impossible to ever break. Vega is going to hit 31 from that little old Ghastly, and this Psychic has also got 
a Miss Dreebus, which is another version exclusive to Pokemon Shining Pearl that you can find back in the Lost Tower. Which reminds me, we actually skipped that area, so we gotta go back eventually. I uh, just wanted to point out that, yeah, Miss Dreebus, you can also find down in the Grand Underground and probably get a higher level and just stronger one overall, so I'd probably recommend just going down there instead. I just noticed Glover has also got a new item with the pickup there and is learning Screech. I'm just waiting for Glover to get that double hit so it can evolve into Ambipon and then we're in business. I actually looked at its stats and we've got a special attacking Apom right now. I think special Ambipom is a thing. Like it does learn a lot of special moves like Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt. This man really had three Ponytas? What kind of collector are you? I thought collectors collected different kinds of things, but I guess it depends on what? Bonsai? No way, dude, you're level 32! How is this happening, dude? So I guess Turtwig evolves early, or well, Turtwig evolves late, but then Grottle evolves early, because now Bonsai has reached his final form of Torterra! Got that whole tree on its back, and even a little mountain range there. The Continent Pokemon, finally grass and ground type. Small Pokemon occasionally gather on its unmoving back to begin building their nest. <laughs> That's actually kind of cute, dude. I imagine like little Murkrow or Toko making its nest up in Bonsai's tree. And we're gonna learn Earthquake already? Certainly, that might have helped at the last gym, you know, against Lucario. Could've just trained a couple more levels and Maylene would have been nothing. But, you know, in the end we won with the Brick Break. Just had to strategize a little bit, which is good. A lot of people have been complaining about difficulty recently. And even though I think I'm like the only person that's actually lost a gym battle in this game. Why am I still talking about this dude? Clearly I'm feeling some type of way about RL. I'm not exactly a gracious loser. Or is that the way you say it? Basically, I don't take losses easily. Like, I've played a lot of League in my life, and losing never feels good in that game or any competitive game. Though I wouldn't exactly say I'm a rager either. I just kind of shut down whenever I'm in a bad mood after losing. I don't know, I just don't want to be talked to or poked. And speaking of L's, this Goldeen, I feel bad for it, honestly. I just wanted to try out Bonsai. Fully evolved in its first battle. P.I. Carlos was not expecting a fully evolved starter. I'm sure of that one. But since I brought up League, that actually reminds me. I've also been watching a new show on Netflix called Arcane, you might have heard of. Because it's been trending all over the place. And it's actually made by League of Legends. Well, it's actually based on the game. Like, all the characters from it appear and everything. And it's a freaking banger, dude. It's absolutely amazing. Like, even if you don't watch League, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Because it's legit been, like, number one on Netflix. And it's a League of Legends thing. Like, I don't know. People have been had a negative view towards League of Legends. But they actually made something good, dude. They made something not toxic. And, in fact, pretty positive for the most part. Like... I mean, not really the message of the show or anything, but just the reception of it has been nothing but praise, at least from what I've seen. Which kind of ties back to the whole common question. What shows have you guys been watching recently? Any good anime or real life TV shows? Maybe even movies? I know that Eternals came out recently. And uh, even though I used to keep up with like everything new from Marvel, I've kind of fell off a little bit ever since Endgame. I don't know if that's just me, but like I legit haven't watched really anything aside from WandaVision and there was another Disney show. Oh yeah, Loki. But I haven't seen any of the movies. It's a little something I like to call Marvel fatigue. I didn't actually come up with that. I'm uh, pretty sure I heard it in another YouTube video. Don't remember exactly who, but basically there was just too many dang Marvel movies all in a row. Now I need a little bit of a break. But I'll definitely be back for that new Spider-Man. Like, that looks insane, dude. I'm so looking forward to Spider-Man 3 Home Wrecking. <laughs> That's definitely not the name of it. But I know all the Spider-Man movies, with Tom Holland at least, have, like, home in the name. So that'd be pretty funny if, like, 10 years later we got Spider-Man Home Wrecker. <laughs> 
He cheats on Mary Jane with Gwen Stacy. Oh God. I'm so excited for the actual next movie though. Not gonna spoil anything, but it does look pretty crazy. Like we might have some returning characters from the past Spider-Man movies, which I never thought was gonna happen. Like a crossover with Toby, the OG Spider-Man. That's not exactly confirmed yet, but like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen, dude. If they have like all the villains from the past movies in it, maybe that's already kind of spoiling it. But the trailer has been out there for weeks. Like people have kind of known about it. I don't know. I feel like everybody knows about Marvel. It's the one thing that you can kind of talk about and not be too uh, scared with spoilers, at least for the trailers. My apologies if anybody out there didn't know anything about it though. You gotta check out Arcane though. Even if you're not into League of Legends, like I said, the story is something you can definitely get into and enjoy, regardless of how much League knowledge you've got. Like if you've never even touched the game or heard of it, it's still a really good anime or animation. I don't know exactly what to call it because it is animated, but it's not an anime, but it has some of like the same tones as anime. Like it's a lot darker. But while we're here, I guess we should add Patchy back. I want to see Cranidos evolve. I think it is at level 30 that it becomes Rampardos, but it's been kind of hard to train or well actually use it in any battles. I don't know, maybe this collector will be the one that changes it for us. Because at least in terms of levels, these guys haven't been all that crazy. And of course, it's a grass type. There we go, Patchy 24 and Vega 32, I think. Vega might also be evolving soon. It might even be at 32. I guess we'll find out after we get past this collector dude. And wow, the black screen stalled just a little bit, but not enough to make me think it was a psychic in our presence. Hello. That reminds me of another show I've been watching recently, and that is the anime Jujutsu Kaisen, which is kind of about psychics. Is that what they're called actually? No, they're called sorcerers. But they're kind of like psychics, or they have psychic powers, basically. And it's about exercising demons, except in a super cool anime shonen fighting kind of way. And I've been really digging that show too. I heard there's a movie coming out for it soon, which sounds pretty cool, but I'm not even done with the show yet, so I guess I can't get too excited. Even though I've been watching it for like over six months, I'm pretty sure I started watching it when it first started airing earlier in the year or maybe even late last year i don't know when the show started but it's really good i just have been really inconsistent with watching it which is why i gotta get back to the gym another reason dude whenever i go on the treadmill or the elliptical i watch anime on it so that's like when i would get my fix but since i haven't been to the gym all that much recently haven't been watching all that much anime either but over here we've got a hidden heart scale, don't need no dowsing machine for that one. I don't need no machine telling me where to look. There's also an item ball over there and I think one to the south that I spotted earlier. As well as a collector to our left there in that patch of grass, I don't think we've battled him yet so we'll eventually make our way through all these trainers. But first, Max Potion. A little bit early in the game for that, don't you think? Like, seriously, doesn't Max Potion heal like 200 HP? I don't even think Torterra has that much on our team. But there's another thing that I actually skipped over in this route. So before we take on that collector, we're going to backtrack just a little more. Actually, quite a bit more to this cave back here. Where we can actually get a special Pokemon encounter. But also, this guy, the Ruined Maniac. I don't care what they call me. I'll just keep on chipping away at the rock wall little by little. Do you know why? Because a ruined maniac is fascinated by the unknown. I know it's a little sudden, but how about you and me have a race? You go and catch the unknown, and I'll keep digging away. We'll have a race to see who can get it done faster. So yeah, the more unknown that you catch, the deeper into this cave the ruined maniac will get. And speaking of digging, here we've got the TM for it, which I think you can actually use outside of battle too like to get out of caves, basically like a free escape rope, as long as your Pokemon has it, like taught. But more importantly, we can find my favorite Pokemon of this playthrough here. Yeah, dude. Nah, there is a very rare encounter in this cave that is obviously not Geodude, 
but I don't even know if we're gonna find it because it's only like a 5% chance. However, if you collect more unknown and get this man to make the cave bigger, eventually the spawn rate of that Pokemon I'm talking about will increase. But at least from what I've read in the comments, apparently we can find it right now. It's just gonna be a very low chance. So it's time for some editing magic. Hey, there we go. I don't know why I continue to look for this thing, but Hippopotas has appeared. If anything, I just wanted to prove that it is indeed here to myself, but also the audience. Because I thought at first you had to expand the cave in order to even find it, but no, there it is with like a 5% chance. So it definitely took me a while. And we got the female, which has the brown snout or brown nose, you could say. <laughs> There it is, in the Pokedex. Lives in arid places. Instead of perspiration, it expels grainy sand from its body. I love hippos, dude. You guys ever seen that video of the hippo eating the watermelon? So satisfying. I'm gonna call you Mel, just for that reference right there. Could have gone with the full melon, but Mel definitely sounds cuter. And now we can move on to the rest of this route. I will go ahead and pick those berries up off screen or something, I can't be bothered. But can you please move out the way, bro? Like, come on, what are you doing? Oh yeah, that reminds me. I wanted to actually have Togepi walk alongside us. I don't know how I forgot to do that earlier, but yeah, that also gives your Pokemon happiness, which is what we need for our little Togepi. So uh, it'll teleport every other second. Oh my goodness, it really is just constantly teleporting. What is going on? That's a good feature right there. Very well polished. But now we've made it to Valor Lakefront. And these two scientists have been asked to keep everyone out of the lake to protect it? Okay, that's certainly not sketch. Why is there just a paralyzed heel in the middle of the grass? That's kind of weird too. Those scientists over there, most likely Team Galactic. But uh, this lady here has gone and dropped her sweet key somewhere. The hotel people won't be happy. I'm sure I had it when I left the reception counter earlier. No worries, I'm on the case. Detective Munch has never failed a case. Hey, what are you- Oh, man just went right through the stairs right there. Sunny Shore City, which is down the road, had a major blackout. Crews are working on restoring power, but the roads closed. Why? I have never heard of a city getting closed or shut down because of a blackout. I mean, maybe some restaurants and things. Oh my goodness, what is... Wow. That is hideous. That might be like the first major glitch in the game where I'm just like in awe that that's... I don't know, it just seems so obvious that they could fix that, the shading on those trees. But apparently, no. 1.1 update came out and that's not part of it or the fixes. But uh, I'm fixing to check out this building and some very familiar faces. Now, I'm not just talking about Gengar. This guy right here with the Psyduck next to him is the game director. You're working on filling a Pokedex, are you? It's awesome that you're going to meet lots of Pokemon. Come show me your Pokedex when you filled it with tons of entries. So this right here, in case you couldn't tell, is my man. Masuda, the man, the myth, the legend. And if you don't believe me, Psyduck is actually his favorite Pokemon. Yeah, it's 100% that's Masuda right there. And is that a duck on his shirt, actually? I don't know who this guy is, though. I'm assuming he's got to be some new worker from Ilka or director, I guess, because Masuda is just supervising and doing the music as far as I know. So this guy must be the real game director who apparently likes... Gengar the best, so he's got that alongside him. But yeah, we'll definitely come back once our Pokedex is filled up. I don't know if it's the Sinnoh Dex or maybe the National Dex, but uh, eventually I'm guessing we're gonna get to battle Masuda, because that's usually what happens in all the other Pokemon games. You can fight Amori. I don't know if we've ever been able to fight Masuda himself though, like that's kind of epic. What's going on in this building though? Simple soul, I let my guitar do the talking. I can shine wherever I go, I have those things. Okay, thought you were actually gonna have something for me. How about you, psychic? Read my fortune? Yes. A brief occasion of joy is imminent. But remember, the good and the bad are on opposite sides of a coin. 
Well, that's pretty much as vague as can be. That could literally be anything. I mean, I am gonna go pick up a Christmas tree later, so maybe that could be the moment of joy? <laughs> At least someone in this room has an actual item for us. Or technically a TM for Trick Room. And I think uh, right here in front of this building, you can actually find that girl's sweet key. So let's bust out the good old dowsing machine and ping ping to see that... Uh, oh, there it is. Right in front of us, actually. Like, literally, right in front of us. The sweet key! Life sure is sweet. Especially with Zack and Cody. Anybody remember that show? I used to love it, dude. What am I to do? I got your key for you, don't worry. Now she's going to step inside and uh, I really hope she's got something for us. I didn't just get your key for free. Hey, something for our troubles, a lava cookie? I guess that's kind of a delicacy or at least a rarity in Sinnoh because originally they come from Hoenn. But like, really? That's the reward for finding the sweet key? I was expecting something maybe a little more sweet. Wait, I just realized it's a cookie. There's a little bit of irony in that. But now let's move on. Uh, I don't think there's anything in this building here, but we might as well check it out just for completion's sake. Is that right? You're a traveler? Yes, good to see other places. Have you heard of Tin Tower and Johto region? The rainbow colored Pokemon. I must see that in my lifetime. Yeah, I might, I might have heard of it. Anyway, let's move on. Actually, I totally skipped the hotel itself earlier. Or was that another cafe? Because I think this is the hotel, technically. Even though I don't even see any stairs leading up to the rooms or... Wait, actually, I guess the rooms are all the suites that we saw back outside. But hey, the homie actually heals up our Pokemon. That's nice of you. This right here, though, the Seven Star Restaurant has a whole bunch of trainers that we can battle. And I guess we could use the experience? Not really. I think I might save it until after we get our next teammate, which I'm planning on getting over in Pastoria City. So yeah, even though this man said, Bon Appetit, I'm not ready for that fine dining experience just yet. Over to the left, we've got a red shard. In case you didn't notice, this is the hotel building that we were in earlier. I just did a little weird edit there. I stand stoically in front of the deep blue sea. Why? Because I'm rich. Okay. All right, bro. Okay. Someone needs to give that guy a little uh, piece of reality pie. And yo, speak of reality. I don't know what this has to do with reality, actually. But our Manaphy is going to be hatching. Yeah. Look at that cutie. Oh, my goodness. That is so awesome that they've actually got Manaphy in the game. And I guess it's not actually in the Sinnoh Dex yet until the national version. We'll go with Prince. But anyway, uh, if you don't know or didn't know, Manaphy was actually exclusively in Pokemon Ranger back in the day. You had to play all the way through the first Ranger game. In the post game, you could unlock a bonus mission, which at the end rewarded you with a Manaphy egg that could be transferred to Diamond and Pearl. But I actually never did the Manaphy side quest. Even though I did play Ranger on the channel a while back, I was streaming it. So maybe after Brilliant Diamond and Pearl, I'll do a special bonus stream for Manaphy, the Pokemon Ranger post game. Because I'm genuinely curious to see, like, how exactly you transfer Manaphy. And wait a minute, did I just see that correctly? I'm pretty sure Apom picked up a Dusk Stone. Oh my gosh, yo, what? Are you serious? There is no way we got that lucky, dude. Like, come on. That is actually the stone that we need in order to evolve Murkrow. Normally, you wouldn't get this until much later in the game. Or maybe not exactly that late, like after the sixth gym, I think. But we got one a little early. Christmas came early today. <laughs> maybe that's what the psychic was predicting with the whole joy coming soon. Because now we get our delectable Hunch Crow. Delectable is definitely not the word I was looking for. <laughs> this guy is the big boss. Becoming active at night, it is known to form flocks with numerous Murkrow. 
So dope, dude. The big boss. Oh, man. I was definitely not expecting to get Honchkrow this early. You know what? To celebrate, why don't we... No, not you, Vega. Let's get Toko to walk together. Look at this dude. Wait, I think this is actually where I saw in the trailer. Or one of the gameplay, pre-release gameplay videos. Someone had a Honchkrow exactly in this route. Was it a premonition of my own playthrough? Seems like it, dude. Like, what are the odds? And that fisherman didn't want to battle, but I'm guessing this one does. Yep. Please, anything. But, God dang it. Well, at least we get to show off Toko, now fully evolved into Honchkrow, and also Remoraid. This guy's actually surprised us with at least one of his Pokemon. And even though Toko doesn't have the strongest of attacks right now, I think if we go to the move relearner, which is actually coming up in Pastoria, uh, we can get ourselves some new attacks for him. And here comes a Gyarados. Oh, this will be the real test for Toko, dude. With Assurance as our strongest move and Intimidate coming in. That's not great. to lower our attack. But, I mean, we do have Psychic also, which is a special move, so it's not affected by the Intimidate. And it doesn't do all that much damage. I'm gonna have to check out Toko's stats. Like, I feel that Psychic was a little underwhelming, but then again, it's not like we get stabbed from it. As in, it's not a dark or flying type move, so if it was one of those, like, uh, eventually I'm sure we'll learn Night Slash, maybe Air Cutter, that's the main one that I know of, at least in terms of flying attacks. Those will be doing much more damage than the Psychic, but, uh, Fisherman Kenneth, you know, at first you were a little disappointing, but at least you made up for it with the Remoraid and the Gyarados switching things up. Now here we've got Dr. Footprint! Who can apparently read the footprints of your Pokemon and tell their most inner thoughts. Oh, you're skeptical? I mean, okay, let's just let Staravia walk for you. Whatever that means, we're a perfectly matched combo. Okay, so do we get anything? Uh, you know what, I'm a little hungry too, man. Wait, that's it? Oh no, what? That's what Staravia thinks of me? So is Staravia hungry or is the doctor? Hungry. I am so confused, dude. Just please don't peck out my eyes while I'm sleeping. That'd be terrifying. Like, low-key, that's why I don't want to get a cat. Because even though I know that the chances of it happening aren't really all that likely... Wait, what the frick? This lady's got a glam meow. And I'm talking about a cat gouging out my eyes. What are the odds? The synchronicity is off the charts in this episode. Seems like we're manifesting left and right. But yeah, I think like if I did get a pet, I would probably prefer a dog over a cat. Even though I know cats are easier to take care of and I am quite lazy, so maybe a cat would suit me. But at the same time, I'm, I'm terrified, like I said, at the prospect of waking up with it. Just even if it doesn't scratch, like just waking up in the middle of the night and seeing the cat doing some creepy cat stuff. Like, I've heard not just cats, but dogs, too. They can apparently see the supernatural, if you believe in that kind of thing. They just look at really creepy things, or just stare off into nothingness, making you think that they actually do see something, even when there's nothing there. So, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons not to trust a cat. <laughs> something on top of this big cliff, my instincts tell me, but how am I supposed to climb up? Well... You're gonna need something that we don't quite have yet. A hidden move called Rock Climb that B Barrel can help you out with, but not yet, like I said. So we are moving on, skipping past some berries that, uh, oh, I didn't realize that you could actually check out all these maps in the town gates. That's kind of cool. But speaking of town, we have finally made it to Pastoria. Oh, the nostalgia, dude. The music is hitting, but wait a minute. Where the heck is the the stand-up thing you can put your head in the little crow gunk is that only in platinum what the heck dude oh very no wait what fire stickers okay and this is why you talk to random ladies in town you never know and one of them might give you some fire stickers but yeah that's kind of lame dude i thought that was a diamond and pearl feature anyway uh that guy talked a little bit about the great marsh which uh we also checked out but wait is there a panoramic view? Yes siree! Look at Honchcrow! So stoic! 
so impressive with that wingspan. Like, that's gotta be at least six feet of wings right there. Someone in the Great Marsh offered me a technical machine, but I declined. Why? What the heck? Oh, yeah, defog. That's uh, something we definitely want to get. Been to the Pokemon Mansion? Yes, sir. Literally in this very same episode. And what's this? The Safari game? Okay, yeah, I do want to try that, but we're probably going to have to save it for the next episode because this one has already been running for a while. But before we call it, uh, there is this man right here who is the Pokemon Move Maniac. And he knows every move that Pokemon learn while leveling up and will actually teach them to you for a heart scale, which we do have a couple of heart scales that we found uh, back in the underground. But also in that route earlier, I'm pretty sure we got one. So we're gonna check out Toko and see what he can learn. We got a couple of moves in here. Night Slash, Sucker Punch, both pretty good. But Air Cutter is the one we mainly want. Plus, we've got Super Luck, which raises critical hit chance. And Air Cutter has a high critical hit chance already. So basically, Air Cutter is going to hit crits like 90% of the time. And that's what makes Haunch Crow so awesome. Now that is actually going to do it for this episode. Next time we will be taking on Crasher Wake, the greatest gym leader this world has ever seen. Thank you all for watching, smash like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you then.